Welcome to another edition of the CDG BizCast. I'm your host, Christian Gonzalez, co-owner of Creativity Design Group, a digital marketing firm in Houston, Texas. Today, we will be discussing some general tips on how you can ensure you provide a stellar customer service experience for each customer as we enter the busiest time of the year. Joining me today is my panelist in the United Kingdom, Sarah Russell. During the incredibly busy holiday season, you're going to see a major influx of traffic to both your retail storefront and your website, and we're going to talk about the importance of making sure that customers are being served properly through both channels. If your store is especially very popular and busy year-round, then you know you're going to see that traffic double during the holiday season. Don't make the mistake of allowing the hustle and bustle of the holiday season destroy the customer service experience. Make sure that you are ready to handle all these customers as they come in and that if any of them have an issue or problem, you're ready to tackle it right away and get them squared away so that they're experienced experience is worth five stars. Never cut corners on trying to help a customer out. Make sure that each experience that you try to provide a customer is always a five star experience. Due to the fact that the holiday season is so busy, it certainly does show an increase in challenges and opportunities. And it's important to remember that if you're not careful and you don't do the right steps to prepare yourself ahead of time, you can expect a decrease in quality when providing service to your customers. You will see a decrease in quality in customer service and bad customer service can translate to upset customers which of course will translate to them never returning to your business they'll go somewhere else and they'll give one of your competitors a business instead it takes 12 positive experiences to make up for one unresolved negative experience and it only takes one customer to leave a bad review and then that bad review can go viral overnight automatically destroying the image of your business so don't allow that to happen don't allow that to happen to your company this holiday season. Make sure that you're ready to take care of your customers and provide the best experiences. The best way to do that is to prepare yourself ahead of time. And we're going to go over a couple of different methods to help you make sure that you're ready for the holiday season, how you can boost your customer service and ensure that each customer that you're dealing with leaves with a smile on their face. The first tip that I have for you is to start picking your methods of communication and assign an employee, if you have employees that is, to each channel. Now, if you're a solopreneur, you need to make sure that you have the ability to handle different channels of communication because if you don't have a staff, it can be a bit overwhelming. But rest assured that if you're able to dedicate some time to handle each one, you won't have any issues. Don't allow yourself to feel overwhelmed if you have to take on more than one channel of communication. There are many different channels of communication. Are you going to utilize email, live chat, social media, phone support? If you're serious about handling different customers, I would 
would go for all of these. But if you feel that you do not have the ability at this moment to handle more than one or two channels of communication, only implement the ones that you feel comfortable with, the ones that you know that you can handle and won't feel overwhelmed. You don't want to miss any messages that come in. If you can handle all four of these, that's great. But if you feel if you can only handle a few, then only focus on the ones that you know you will be able to handle without any trouble. First, it's important to understand which channels of communication does your customer mainly use and look into the methods of communication that appear to work for both your business and your customer. If you want to add a new channel of communication, think about which ones your customers use the most and then decide which ones you have the ability to support. You'll want to give yourself plenty of time to just sit down and think about different processes, experiment with new tools before you actually dive into serving your customers during the holiday season. You don't want to wait till the holidays to test out something new. Test it out right now. At the time of this recording, it is the end of September and we're going to be in early October. This is the time for you to test out how well a new method of communication could work out for you. Implement it into your website and see how it works for general traffic, which would be any time of the year. That isn't the holiday season, you could say. Just test it out and see how well it works. If you feel that you are able to maintain it well and it works out good for the customers, then go ahead and implement this new method of communication to serve your holiday customers because they are coming. You're going to have a lot of them visiting your website and it's important to make sure that everything is running like a well-oiled machine. Remember that if you're using staff to handle each different channel, make sure they are trained properly. Make sure that they are able to monitor the email boxes and that they are able to operate the chat. And if your chat operates under a certain number of hours, make sure it is clear to the public what hours chat is available. And this also applies if you're offering phone service too. If you don't offer 24 seven support, make sure that you make that clear on your website or any other marketing materials, what your hours of operation are and when your staff will be available to answer questions via chat or email or phone. Always make sure that your customers know exactly where they can find you. Have all of your contact options available on multiple places within your website. Make it easy for them to access support if they need it. I recommend putting it either in the footer where you can have several different options or have your most important methods of contact at the top of your website. You can put your phone number, your email, whichever methods of communication you want to prioritize over others at the very top so that people do not miss it and make sure it's easily marked. It has a nice bold font or a nice big button that stands out and is easy to see or hard to miss the moment somebody pulls up your website. Having the methods of contact on universal areas of your website, such as the headers and footers, make sure that it shows up on every page and that customers do not miss it. Now, with that being said, let me go back to what I just said about making sure your website runs like a well-oiled machine. Your website is going to be one of your biggest tools that you are going to use to get sales. You certainly want to make sure that it is ready to handle a major influx of traffic because more people are going to be visiting your website more than ever during the holiday season to do all their shopping. The busiest shopping day of the year is Black Friday and Black Friday does not start on Black Friday itself. It starts on Thanksgiving evening. As soon as people have put away the turkey leftovers, they've turned off the football, and all the family that they've invited over has left your home to go home, Black Friday begins. This is when retailers are opening their doors to all the crazy sales where people are busting down the doors. They are trying to get their hands on these great deals that they will never find during any other time of the year. And this is especially true for your website. The people who do not want to deal with the crazy crowds and madness at brick and mortar stores are going to be shopping your website to get these exact same deals. Why not hold a Black Friday sale sometime early? Hold it early in November. A lot of retailers do that. But make sure that your website is able to handle all this traffic. Make sure that your hosting is capable of handling a website that that receives many visitors. You don't want to settle for a cheap hosting plan. You want one that is built specifically for e-commerce. And you can find different companies out there that specialize in this. If your website runs on WordPress and you're using WooCommerce, I recommend going with WP Engine or Bluehost. Never settle for the basic budget hosting that's good for basic five-page website. If your website is going to be handling all these customers and you're going to be handling sensitive customer information when they make purchases and pay with credit and debit cards, you'll want to have a hosting company that can provide you rock-solid security, large amounts of traffic, and great options for maintenance should anything go down. You'll want to have as little downtime 
as possible because customers are not going to want to wait. If they cannot make their purchase through your website, they're going to go somewhere else. Make sure that everything is working. There are no dead links that go to pages that do not exist. That can also hurt your SEO as well. Make sure that your checkout process is clean. It's simple and it doesn't require customers to jump through endless hoops. Allow guest checkout because you might have customers who do not feel like going through the extra steps of creating an account. If they have to create an account after they have gone through the checkout process, it just adds extra steps for them and they're not going to want to deal with that extra stuff. If they can bypass the requirement to make an account, it saves them time. Their order will always be saved in your system whether they have an account or not. But make sure that if you have customers who prefer to check out without having to make an account, have that option for guest checkout so that you don't lose sales from frustrated customers. Make sure that you have plenty of inventory on hand. If you know certain items are going to be a hot seller this year, make sure that you have stocked up your warehouse to have these items available, whether people purchase them at your store or through your website. But this is especially true for your website. Make sure that the inventory that you have in your warehouse reflects what you're selling on your website. The last thing you want is to anger a customer because they made a purchase on your website but did not realize that it was out of stock in your warehouse. Show inventory amounts on product pages. Show how many you have left. Show real-time numbers showcasing how many are being purchased, how many people are viewing it. Create a sense of urgency. If they can see how many you have left, it'll just instill this sense of urgency in your customer to make sure that they complete their purchase right then and there. And another way to instill urgency is to make sure that you emphasize on any discounts you're offering if this product is being sold at a special sale price. If it is being sold at a special sale price that you will probably never honor again, make it clear that if they do not purchase it now, this sale will never return and they will have to purchase it at full price next time they want to buy it or if they end up missing out purchasing it at that opportunity. You want to instill FOMO, the fear of missing out within your customer. If you can show them that this is a time sensitive matter to obtain this product, they will buy it right away. You'll want to make sure that as they exit your website, as they exit the page or your website altogether, that a pop-up shows up informing the customer that, that they must make their purchase now if they want to partake of this discount. If they are browsing a product that is not on sale, you can use this pop-up to give them a discount to complete their purchase with a special one-time only discount code that is either time sensitive or will be unavailable once they close the pop-up. When it comes to having your inventory set up, always make sure that your inventory is 100% accurate and there are no discrepancies between what you have on your website and what's actually in your warehouse. This can create a lot of angry customers if you do not have your inventory straight. Now, I no longer need to say any more about that because Sarah here has the perfect example of how having a poorly set up inventory can cost you a customer. Thank you for joining me, Sarah. Please tell me about your experience and what happened when you tried to do some Christmas shopping at a major retailer in your area only to find out that they did not have it in stock. Please share your story. Hello, Christian. Thanks for having me on the show again. Lovely to be here. My story is a uh, lot Last year, I ordered a couple of items from a store for a couple of people in the family. They wanted a few things. So I wanted to check the stock levels online so as not to waste my time going all the way there only to find they didn't have it in stock. So I went on to the website. I put in the store. So I went into the store website, put in my postcode and the postcode of the store and everything. And it all came up fine. Then I put in the items I wanted to get into my computer and it was showing that all the items I wanted were in stock and they had plenty of them. They had like 20 or 30 of each thing. So I thought, well, that is plenty. So I thought, oh, that's great. Let's go and get them. So I thought, right, well, I'll reserve them because it gave you the option to reserve. So I reserved them all. And then I thought, right, great, I can go and get them. So I went the next day to pick them up. They gave me a code beforehand to say, right, when you go, to pick them up you can you know you put this code in you tell them this code they'll put it in and they know where your stock is so I went the next day to pick them up it's about a 35 minute drive to the store to get them but as they was in stock and reserved it wasn't a problem at all I didn't mind because obviously it was for Christmas when I arrived at the store it looked super busy 
there was a lot of people. So I thought, oh, thank goodness I've actually reserved my goods and all the stuff I wanted. So I know I'm guaranteed to get them. So I go to the reservation desk, which was right near the front. They asked me for the reservation code. I gave them my reservation code that was given to me. They checked it on their screen. They put it in. And then all of a sudden she's looked at me all sort of puzzled and said, oh, that doesn't look like that code works at all. And I was like, what? What do you mean? That's the code I've been given online. So that's the one I'm giving you. And then she went, sorry, it's not a valid code. It doesn't go in the screen. I was so annoyed. I said, you've got to be joking. That is one I that you've given me as a store and as a company. And you're telling me that doesn't even go in. So I was super annoyed. But I thought, well, okay, they, they haven't reserved and they haven't got the reservation things, but they must have plenty of stock because they were showing they had plenty of everything of what I wanted. So I thought, oh, well, I might as well just go and get them myself. But then I thought, well, before I do go wandering around this massive store looking for these items, bearing in mind it was super busy, I thought I'd better double check they've actually got them. So I said to the lady, okay, well, so we don't have a code that works, a reservation code. Can you check each individual item? So she sort of huffed and puffed a bit because I don't think she wanted to do that. Anyway, I said, well, I don't want to waste my time walking around this store if you haven't actually got them. So anyway, so she put all the items in that I'd reserved. She searched them on her screen and checked all the stock levels, each one, right? What's this one? What's this one? What's this one? Anyway, so she went through and she went, hmm, I'm sorry, none of your items are actually in stock at all. I went, what do you mean? You were showing tons and tons on your website. And then when I double checked, the store. That's why I was able to reserve them because you had them in stock. So she says, well, I'm sorry, we don't have any of the things you wanted. I said, well, it's showing you've got tons. If you don't actually have the stock, why is it showing you've actually got it on there? She just told me she didn't know. So I was annoyed because I said I've driven 35 minutes to pick up some items I've reserved online from your store. And now you're telling me you don't have any of them at all. This is so diabolical and out of older. You've just wasted wasted petrol. You've wasted my time. And I said, I'm not happy about this. Get me your manager now, please. Anyway, about 10 minutes later, the manager turns up and the sales lady tells him the story. And he turns to me and says, I'm so sorry, but we have done a stock take a few days ago and the stock figures are not correct. So to be honest, we don't really know what we have in stock. I said, what? You're blaming the stock tapes for the items error. And I've reserved my items online and I have driven 35 minutes to pick them all up and not one of the items in stock. This is disgusting. I'm really angry right now. I was really ready to, to fly into them. And I said, what are you going to do about it then? So the reply from the manager was, I'm sorry, I can't do anything about it. I said, can you give me a head office number or something? Because this is not acceptable. What you're telling me, it's not acceptable. So I need your head office phone number and your email address, please. And at this point, I'm just so fuming. I'm trying to keep calm. But there's so many people about, it's just hard to keep cool. Meanwhile, now there's a queue about a mile long behind me but I really didn't care because I was more interested in getting what I wanted so I wasn't happy I needed to do something about it so he wasn't happy to give me any information from the head office or so any contact details but I said I really need him so I under duress and the fact that he really didn't want to do anything, he finally gave me some contact details, but he wouldn't give me the phone number. He would only give me an email number. So then I promptly left the store feeling really, really annoyed and angered. The fact I've driven 35 minutes to get to the store to pick up my goods, which isn't there, and they haven't got them anyway in stock. It's not like I can go on the shop floor and pick them up. They weren't willing to help me, weren't willing to get any products from another store and let me get them or send them to my address. So when I got home, I emailed the company. It was quite an angry email. As you can imagine, I told them the whole story from the start. After what seemed to be months, it was probably months in the end, my customer service team, one of the members finally got back to me. Couldn't apologize enough. Kept saying, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry about your experience I'd had from the store and said that it was a new manager and they really didn't know the rules about 
dealing with my particular situation and what to do. But as a gesture of goodwill, they give me a cheque for £10 for my petrol and in my wasted time. And they said, oh, we've also included a £2 gift card for you to spend in the store when you next purchase an item. Well, I wasn't satisfied with that. And you can imagine what I said out loud. It's not broadcastable. But I vowed I'd never ever go back to the place again. That's for sure. And to this day, I never have. I did eventually get all the items I wanted for Christmas. I just had to shop around and get them from other sites, various other sites from lots of different stores and so you know it's just a totally unacceptable situation to be in so near to Christmas when you're panicking getting stuff that people want anyway so super angry that's how I was super angry did the retailer give you a refund for all those items since you've already purchased them beforehand on their website yes yeah I got all my money back on that didn't know how to do it in the store but the customer service team did that so as a gesture of well, they gave me an extra £10 just for my petrol and the £2 gift card just to spend in that store for whatever I was going in for, which I never went back again. So, yeah, luckily I did actually get full refund, but the store itself didn't do that because they didn't know how to do it and the manager didn't have a clue. Where they messed up was the fact that they did not do proper testing with their website. They did not check to see if their inventory reflected what they had available for sale. And the worst part of this whole thing, they failed to set customer expectations. When you're getting ready for the holidays, you need to set up your team to be ready to be successful. You don't set up a team ready for failure. You set it up for success. And this is what they failed to do. They should have had the inventory available on their website. They should have shown exactly how much they had available. The code that they gave you should have worked. They were in the midst of transitioning to a new system. They should have done that way before the holidays, way before Christmas, way before all these customers started coming in. They should have done that as early as August if they wanted to implement something new, especially something that big because website development is not an easy task. It's not something that you can get done in just a few hours or just in a week. It requires testing and they failed to set up their new system to serve the public. They didn't do their testing. They didn't check for technical difficulties. It sounds like they just launched their new system without even doing any testing to see if anything was going to work. If they did their testing, they would have realized that these codes that they were issuing were not working and they found out the hard way. And as a result, they lost a customer. And you're probably not the only customer they lost because you mentioned that there was a really long line of people behind you. Every single one of those people who are waiting in line most likely in the exact same situation that you went through. Don't think I was the only one. They all probably had codes as well, like order numbers sort of things, and they're still reservation codes. So I reckon they all had the same issue. This retailer certainly lost a good chunk of their customer base due to them violating their trust like that and wasting all their time. Let's hope for the best that they all got refunded should they have gone through the exact same fiasco that Mm. you went through. It's important to make sure that customer expectations are ready to be exceeded. You don't want to just meet expectations. You want to exceed them. Retailers on your websites, make sure that you have some straightforward information that you can provide to the customers. Make sure that if products are out of stock, that you let them know up front. If you're going to allow them to place pre-orders for items that are out of stock, make sure your website is capable of doing so. And that once the item that is on back order arrives in your warehouse, you're able to ship them out promptly because you already know you have customers waiting who've already paid and are waiting to receive it. This is especially true if you want to take sales on items that are on back order several months before they arrive in your warehouse. If you're going to be taking these payments, don't let any one of them be missed. Make sure that you ship out each one as soon as they arrive in your warehouse and the customer receives it in a timely manner. Always take notes of what they're ordering, what shipping methods they are using, and get the product to them as quickly as possible based on their shipping class. Make sure that you have a chat bot that is programmed properly and is able to address customer concerns without any issues. We did a whole episode about this previously, episode 45. You do not want a chat bot that is going to send you in circles. When customers have questions, make sure that the bot can answer their questions and send them over to a human employee should they have a very unique situation that requires a real live customer service agent. You should automate your chat bots to answer questions such as what your operating hours are, what order statuses are, or any other 
general question that can be answered that does not require using a customer service agent's time because these customer service agents certainly do need to be able to handle more unique problems. You can let the chatbot answer the general questions that don't require an agent. Setting expectations for the customers goes a long way and it's one of the most important things you can do to ensure your customer has a positive experience. Remember that first impressions count. If your customers are shopping at your store for the first time, make sure they have the best possible first impression they could get because first impressions stick. They don't go away. If they have an F-rated experience like Sarah here just had, I guarantee you they're going to go to one of your competitors. Don't go out of business. Don't do what that retailer she dealt with did. Do the right thing and be ready to serve your customers. Do all of your testing ahead of time. Do not wait till the big shopping season comes to decide that you want to try something new or test out certain things on your website, certain technical aspects. Make sure that when day one comes, you're ready to handle an influx of traffic and that your warehouse is stocked and that you're able to receive orders without any hassle. Make sure customers are able to complete the checkout process seamlessly. It's also important to remember that if you have time sensitive customers, speed equals empathy. When you can serve them at a speedy rate without making mistakes, you're showing that you care about them. The holidays are all about being kind to each other, making sure that we show that we care about our loved ones. Well, in the business world, your loved ones are your customers. They're the ones who keep your company going every day. Show empathy towards them. Always show your customers that you care, especially if they are angry and they're showing that they're dissatisfied with your company and their customer service experience that they had with your company. It's understandable that there's going to be extra layers of stress. Both the retailer and the customer are both facing stress right now. Make sure that all customer interactions are positive five-star interactions. Always strive to exceed their expectations. Talk to your customers. Show them that you want to get them out the door right away with them feeling assured that they make the right purchases and that there won't be any issues later. What's important to make sure that you have a speedy yet friendly interaction is having a friendly conversation that is not too lengthy with your customers. So whether you're talking to them on the phone or checking them out at the cash register or talking to them at the customer service desk, always say hi, be friendly, wish them the best, but do not waste their time talking about stuff that has nothing to do with their issue should they have an issue or if they're just merely checking out their purchases at the register. The cash register or the customer service desk is not the place to be talking about what you're going to do on vacation, what your kids did, what TV shows you're watching, or any of that stuff. That is the time to be focused on business to make sure that your customers are getting their business taken care of and they're out the door with a smile on their face. Be friendly, but don't waste your customer's time. Again, the checkout line or the customer service line or any other places where you have to interact with customers is not the time to be making personal conversations. That is a time for you to focus on getting their issues taken care of, all their purchases scanned to ensure that their customer is out the door so they can go on with their day and take care of their other business that they need to take care of. This is especially true for people who like to do some shopping during their short lunch break while they're at work. They might use their lunch break to take care of some of their Christmas shopping. Make sure that you get them out the door fast with a smile on their face. Be kind and friendly to them when you're talking to them but don't waste time talking about stuff that is irrelevant. You're not being rude to your customer when you do not make personal conversation with them. You're just showing that you care about their time and that you want to make sure that they go on with their day so that they're not late for their appointments or late going back to work or anything like that. You can skip the personal conversation and still be friendly to a customer. Always make sure that when your company makes a mistake, you take ownership of that mistake. It's important to remember that when you have a major customer problem, do not send that customer up the creek without a paddle. Take ownership of the problem and do whatever you can to make it right, even if you have to refund them. Don't hold your customer's money and make a bunch of excuses over why you can't refund them, especially if they did not receive the item. You can give them their money back or offer an alternative product to substitute for the product they lost out on if you are dealing with a customer who was not able to make a certain purchase. Now, sorry, you have told me that you have gone through an experience where you attempted to purchase something, they sent you the wrong item items and then they tried to make it sound like it was your problem in terms of paying for returning the items. Please tell me more about that nightmarish experience. Yes. Well, I ordered some tracksuits near one Christmas and with a tracksuit, you have to buy the tops and the bottoms. Well, I knew I didn't want to have odd sizes. I just wanted the normal size. So I went on the website, showed it was in stock, what I wanted, chose the design I wanted, the color I wanted, the make of tracksuit and I thought 
right, well, I'll go for a medium. So I put in medium because sometimes the track suits come up small. So I thought, right, I'll do medium top, medium bottoms. So I'd done that paid for it all then it said right it's eight pound delivery so I thought oh it's a bit steep but okay it had nothing on the site about returning it didn't say anything about returns and anything so I thought right okay anyway so I purchased it and I waited probably I must have waited probably two two weeks or so and then when they finally come I got them out of the packet and the first thing I always do is check the sizes So on the sheet of paper that comes with it of what you've ordered, it actually said medium top, medium bottoms. When I've looked at the products themselves, the top was a small and the bottoms were large. So when I thought, well, sometimes their labels are wrong inside the products itself. So I've opened them up and sure enough, the top is so small, tiny, tiny, and the bottoms are like clown trousers. They were massive. So I did no more. I packaged everything up, looked inside and it said about a return. What you need to do, go on this website and then put in your order number and then process the return. And then obviously say the reasoning of why you're returning them. So I put on there, you've sent the wrong sizes because clearly they haven't sent not sent what I've ordered so I put sent the wrong sizes so I've put that in and it's come up with after the process well you're going to have to pay eight pounds to send them back but I'm like "Mm, no because they you've sent them and they're wrong to me I haven't ordered the wrong thing you've sent me the wrong thing so luckily there was a phone number on this particular page and because I had it open I thought I'll give them a ring so I phoned them up and spoke to a lady she was ever so nice and she put all my details up and everything and then I explained what had happened and um She said, oh, unfortunately, we can't do anything about it. You would have to still pay to send them back. I said, but you've sent the wrong thing. Well, it's not us personally. It's how they've come up. I said, but you've got on the paperwork what I've ordered, medium and medium. But you've sent me small top, large bottoms. I said, so you have sent me the wrong thing. So why am I paying to send them back when I've already paid to have the right ones sent to me in the first place? So she said, well, I'm sorry, our procedure is we do not pay for the deliveries. The customer pays for the deliveries. So I had a bit of a heated debate over this. I was in the right. I know I was in the right because they have sent the wrong things. Anyway, so what it was in the end, I had to pay to send them back. They gave me a refund, but they got a terrible review. Absolutely awful review. So it cost me about 20 quid for something which I didn't even end up having in the end. So absolutely disgusting and useless and never, ever would I use them again. That is outrageous. That was outrageously unacceptable. What they failed to do was they failed to take ownership of the problem. And just like with the other retailer, they failed to meet your expectations. They showed no interest in helping a paying customer. They instead took a mistake that they made, that they made themselves, that their staff made, and called it the customer's problem. You had all the documentation Mm. showing what you ordered. You had it right there to show them. Mm. They still acted as if you made the wrong order and that they didn't do anything wrong. That is so far from the truth as you can get. You ordered the right thing. Mm. They sent you the incorrect item. Yeah. They still expected you to foot the bill. For a mistake they made, yeah. Say I've ordered a computer and they send me a fluffy toy. That's not my fault. They've sent me the wrong thing. But they wouldn't take ownership of the fact that they have sent the wrong item. It's diabolical and I don't know how these companies get away with it. I really don't. It makes me mad. They make Makes me mad just hearing about it. There was no reason for them to do that. That is probably the most perfect example I've ever heard of a company showing that they just absolutely do not care about their customers and just want to pass the buck on to somebody that has nothing to do with the problem. That's horrible. That's a scam company right there. I'm glad that you will never buy anything from them again, and you shouldn't. And both retailers that you've given me examples of, you shouldn't buy anything from again. They've shown that they don't care about the customer and they're not ready to handle customer service and. 
general. It's horrible. They've shown that they don't care. Now, I'm going to throw some (laughs) tips out there to help business owners make the customer service experience better so that they do not fall into the category of these two examples that we're talking about. You know, the category of bad companies that nobody should ever patronize again. For one thing, we've already talked about setting customer expectations. Never fail to set these expectations. Make sure that that your website has all information readily available. It's accurate. You've checked your inventory. The website itself is working properly. All answers to general questions are available either in an FAQ section or if you ask the chat bot and then going back to the chat bot again, make sure that it can send customers to a live customer service agent when necessary. Make sure that anything that involves automation only enriches the experience but does not replace human to human interaction. Always make sure that you have a workflow set up to help make sure you're tracking high demand products that you know are going to sell out and might end up having some complicated shipping requirements. Anytime a unique problem arises, make sure that you take note of this unique problem and add it to your knowledge base if you have a section in your website related to self-help. If you know that something that you're selling might have a potential problem that customers might encounter, make sure that they know about this up front. Add it to your FAQ section or somewhere on your website where an urgent notice is required to be shown. And this would be for problems that are not recall worthy and probably will not occur with every purchase. But if it's a known problem that a customer might end up facing, make sure that there is information on your website somewhere about it so that any possible new customers will be able to know ahead of time of what's going on. Don't just hide certain details from your customers just so you can make sales. Be honest about what you're selling. If you're going to hide certain things that they need to know from your customers, then you're just engaging in dishonest activity that makes your company look like a scam company. Don't do that. Make sure that you are ready to handle customers, tackle all their problems, and be ready to have solutions available. Always be a solution-based company. Never send your customers in a circle that they cannot escape from. Always make sure that you're ready to handle all their problems. Now, it doesn't matter if you're dealing with the holiday season or any other time of the year. You should always offer a five-star experience for each customer. Do not allow the customer service experience slip just because you're seeing an influx of customers due to the season. In fact, that's what you need to make sure that you are beefing up the customer service experience, not lacking on it. Remember to make sure what your capacity is, what you can handle, especially if you're a solopreneur. If you need to hire a team to make sure that they can handle all the customers, make sure you hire the right people. The time to start hiring for the holiday season is right now. Start staffing now. Start putting up no hiring signs, post jobs online. Start looking for dedicated employees who will be able to help your business take on the challenges of an influx of customers. If you feel that your existing team right now is not enough, hire more people. Try to keep things in-house as much as possible. If you're outsourcing employees to handle certain customer service tasks, it might create problems later versus if you have somebody in-house who can handle it. Look for the right candidates. Make sure they have the right experience. Make sure that they know what they're doing. Train them properly. Train them with a success mindset. Always make sure that they know where to go should they run into a problem. And always make sure that your staff is ready to take on the most difficult of customers and have a solution ready for them. Never let any customer be shown the door because their problems couldn't be solved. Never anger your customers. If you have a customer who's saying great things about your company, who is always raving about how awesome your customer service is, that could lead to potential new customers if the word goes viral. And you don't really have to do much on your part to obtain new customers. But if your company has a damaged image, if one negative customer service experience has destroyed the entire image of your company, then it's going to be a hit and miss with your strategies. You won't know if any new strategies you come up with will be able to bring in new customers or not because the damage may be done by now. So that's my final word on the topic. Just remember to make sure that you are able to handle the customers. You're preparing for the unexpected right now. Think about every single negative possibility that could happen and be prepared to be solution based. Start preparing right now. Do not wait till the shopping season gets here. The time to prepare is right now. If you prepared in August or early September, bonus points for you. But start preparing right now. Be ready to take on these customers. And that's my final word on the matter. Sarah, do you have a final remark you'd like to make as we close out the show? Yeah, just a couple really, Christian. I would say to all the shop owners and stuff like that, make sure your stock figures are correct. I don't care that you've had a stock take or that, or you've got new systems. Make sure your stock is 100% correct. 
especially if you're doing online orders and things like that as well, because it's nothing more frustrating than finding out that you actually show in stock. And when you go, there is no stock. That is the most angering thing as well. And you've lost that customer, as Christian said earlier. So that's one way to lose customers. So stock figures, correct. Make sure you've got enough staff, as Christian said, over the seasonal period. And just make sure your customer is happy. If you've got a complaint, make sure they're happy because a happy customer is a returning customer. So that's my final word. And very well said, Sarah. Thank you for joining me on the show today. Start preparing now for the holidays because they're going to be here before you know it. We're already going to be in October. I certainly wish you all the best and make sure that your staff is ready to handle every single issue that you could possibly take on. Make sure that you are beyond ready to serve your customer and bring your A-game to the table. Thank you for listening to the CDG BizCast. You have a great day, Sarah, and we will talk soon. Thank you, Christian. Take care. All the best.